Well, as, as mentioned, I'm Marcus Wilner. I'm the Chief Operating Officer with a recent title change of Deputy Division Administrator, but still the same, same position uh, with Federal Highway Administration. And I'm representing our, our local office here of FHWA, uh, the Texas Division out of Austin. In this capacity, it's my pleasure to introduce our keynote breakfast speaker this morning and the leader of my agency, FHWA. Nicole R. Nason's tenure as administrator of the Federal Highway Administration began about 10 months ago on April 22, 2019. In this role, she leads a modal administration within the U.S. Department of Transportation that's responsible for the nation's $49 billion federal aid highway program. Previously, Ms. Nason was Assistant Secretary of the U.S. State Department's Bureau of Administration from December 2017 to March 2019. Ms. Nason has also served numerous positions in Washington, D.C. area, notably as administrator of one of our other modes, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, at USDOT, from 2006 to 2008. She also served as DOT's Assistant Secretary for Government Affairs from 2003 to 2006. On a personal note, she's a black belt in karate, and education-wise, Ms. Nason earned a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science and Government at American University and a JD at Case Western Reserve University School of Law. Please join me in welcoming FHWA Administrator Nicole Nason back to San Antonio. Good morning. Good morning, Texas. Thank you, Marcus. He's already left. Um, I'm going to say it anyway, even though he's gone. Marcus, we appreciate you. I appreciate you. Texas appreciates you. Thank you all. I also want to thank the Texas Department of Transportation for inviting me back to San Antonio to join you here for the Texas Transportation Forum. Um, you know, they say everything's bigger in Texas. This may be the biggest audience I've spoken to since I was confirmed as the Federal Highway Administrator. Why does that not surprise me in Texas? It's actually, it's really great to be back here. I am determined, by the way, to see the Alamo while I'm here at some point today. I keep coming in and out. But it's such a privilege to be with so many transportation professionals coming together to discuss challenges and explore opportunities for advancing the state of transportation. At FHWA, my priorities, since I was confirmed last April, of course, mirror those of US Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao, who sends her greetings. Beginning first with the safety of the entire transportation system. Safety of the system is top of mind for all the modal administrators. It unites us across the modes. We're also focusing on infrastructure, including discussions regarding service transportation reauthorization as we near the expiration of the FAST Act this September. And lastly, at FHWA, we believe continuing to spend money to advance research and innovation is where the true potential is, where we can make our roads and our bridges and our tunnels safer and more reliable and more cost effective. And so I'm spending a lot of time talking to Congress and leaders like yourselves about our R&D work, because I think it really matters. So regarding safety, as you may know, late last year, my colleagues at my former agency, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, released highway crash fatality data for 2018 through the Fatality Analysis Reporting System, the FAR system. Total highway fatalities decreased 2.4% in 2018, with 913 fewer fatalities, down to 36,560 people. Highway fatalities in Texas, which do account for nearly 10% of the national total, experienced a similar decrease from 3,732 to 3,642 in 2018. This is the second consecutive year of reduced fatalities, both in Texas and nationally. But of course, as all of you know, our work is far from done. That's 36,560 people, individual people. 
I grew up the daughter of a highway patrol officer. My father was a motorcycle cop from Long Island. Those were his toughest days. Documenting fatalities. He's talked to me about it. And so I know many of you share my passion for getting that number down to zero. Despite our improvements in roadway and intersection design, work zone management, traffic incident management, more safety features in, motor, in uh, cars than ever before, we still lose an average of 10 people per day on the roads in Texas and 100 per day nationally. So I want to take a minute, and we were talking about this backstage, to applaud the Texas Transportation Commission and TxDOT for adopting a road to zero goal of no fatalities in 2050. That is an incredible goal and are to be commended. <laughs> I also want to commend you for allocating an additional $600 million of funds for highway safety projects for fiscal years 2020 and 2021. That is an extraordinary commitment. This funding is on top of the nearly 300 million in annual highway safety improvement program funds. And I just think really reinforces TxDOT's commitment to safety. And I also want to just take one moment and recognize major cities, San Antonio, of course, Houston, Dallas, Austin. I know there are many others who have adopted vision zero resolutions and put safety plans into action. Your leadership in the city and state level is truly critical. So I commend you all. In my congressional testimony last year, for my confirmation hearing, I made it clear that pedestrian safety was in an area of special interest for me. Pedestrians are among our most vulnerable users, and unfortunately, our 2018 FARS data revealed a 3.4% increase over 2017 to 6,283 pedestrian fatalities. That is the highest level since 1990. I was 19. My daughter is now 19. That's how far back we had to go to find levels this high. 10 years ago, pedestrian fatalities were 12% of the total. Today, they account for 17% of all roadway fatalities in 2018. And again, Texas accounts for nearly 10%. We are committed to working with NHTSA, our state and local partners, all of you, to further analyze the data and to implement innovations in pedestrian safety. At FHWA, our Safe Transportation for Every Pedestrian Initiative, STEP, it's my favorite acronym, is helping transportation agencies address pedestrian crashes by promoting cost-effective countermeasures with known safety benefits. For example, when a pedestrian hybrid beacon is installed at a crossing, pedestrian crashes go down by 55%. People are very, very good at responding to flashing lights. Anywhere. Any of us see them, we slow down. It makes a huge difference, just giving the pedestrian the opportunity to flash the lights overhead. When a sidewalk is constructed along the roadway, we see a reduction in nearly 90% of crashes involving pedestrians on that roadway. Of course we do. We separate the people from the road. Just changing the timing of an intersection signal to give pedestrians a head start before the light changes leads to a 60% reduction in pedestrian vehicle crashes at these intersections. If you come visit me at the US DOT, you have four full seconds in front of the Department of Transportation to cross the street to get your coffee, Starbucks or Pete's, it's a big emotional thing at the department. I have no vote either way. And then come back. We give you the time to get across. It makes the, a huge difference. Because vehicles don't try to get around <clears throat> the pedestrian. They wait. We know at Federal Highways that one size does not fit all. And we are interested in providing a variety of engineering options to address state and local needs. We also know that we need to have a data-driven approach. And that is something FHWA has been working on just in the last few years. We need to match identified issues with targeted solutions. If more than 70% of pedestrian fatalities are occurring at night, then simply saying 
we should install additional crosswalks at school zones is not going to help us drive those numbers down. We have to dig into the data and do a better job of coming up with targeted solutions. Please know that the staff in our Texas division, uh, Marcus and Al, our resource center, and our headquarters office of safety stand ready to support you on the road to zero and assist in finding specific solutions to your specific community needs. That is our goal for this year. Secondly, our nation needs to improve its infrastructure. This is not news to any of you in this room. Congress is working on legislation that will help us keep the highway system moving. We provided record levels of technical assistance to Congress last year, and the new year is starting off the same way, which to me at least speaks to the level of interest in reauthorization. President Trump noted in his State of the Union address, we appreciate the leadership demonstrated by the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee to pass bipartisan legislation out of the committee. It was an important first step. We're also currently working closely with the House Transportation Infrastructure Committee as they are working on their own reauthorization proposal. And yesterday, the administration released fiscal year 2021 budget request, which includes 50.7 billion dollars for highway and bridge infrastructure for 2021. That is $3.6 billion over the highest level of FAST, of the FAST Act. It's an extraordinary commitment by the administration. The budget also proposes a historic 10-year, $810 billion reauthorization for surface transportation programs, of which 602 billion goes to the Federal Highway Administration. The 2020 budget highlights, for those of you who are interested, is uh, posted on transportation.gov if you'd like to learn more. And additional details about the administration's upcoming surface transportation reauthorization should be available shortly, I hope. It's in interagency clearance. And will also be on the transportation.gov website. And before I leave, infrastructure and talk a little bit about R&D, I just want to share some stats that you may not all be aware of. The national highway system is stretched like never before. All of us are demanding more from it. More miles, more capacity, more freight tonnage. In 2018, 225 million people racked up 3.2 trillion miles on America's roads. To put that in context, it's up 12 billion miles just from last year. Up 264 billion miles from 10 years ago. And an increase of 612 billion miles from 20 years ago. 40% of our bridges are more than half a century old. The interstate system, the backbone of our economy, is handling three times the number of people and five times the amount of traffic volume today than it did when it was first built. It's more than 60 years old. It's arguably retirement eligible, and we are asking so much more from it. In America, trucks move more than 70% of our domestic freight by value, connecting U.S. consumers to manufacturers, our ports, the world. The American trucking industry is carrying more goods on U.S. roads now than ever before. Estimated in 2017 to be nearly 11 billion tons, valued at $10.5 trillion. And those numbers are expected to climb to 14.2 billion tons, worth $16.2 trillion in the next 25 years. And as consumers, we have all become very selective about what we buy and when we expect those products to be at our doorstep. My children barely tolerate waiting two days to get a package of highlighters or whatever it is they've decided they have to have. With the growth in trade and e-commerce, just-in-time delivery mindset, 
The efficiency of freight movement is so important to businesses and consumers alike. Again, I know this is not news to anyone in Texas either. Highways, uh, railways, ports, airports, pipelines. Texas is among the busiest in the nation for freight movement. I also know our wonderful former Secretary of Commerce, Don Evans, uh, spoke to you all yesterday about the oil and gas boom in the Permian Basin and the associated infrastructure needs vital to getting those natural resources to refineries and distribution centers. I want to thank him and his partners for their focus and their leadership. At FHWA, we know that Texas has one of the longest running freight advisory committees in the nation and maintains a comprehensive multimodal freight mobility plan. Successful implementation of that plan will continue to improve the efficient movement of freight and have economic benefits for both Texas, but the whole nation. At the Texas Mobility Summit this past November, I recognized Texas for assisting truckers with the implementation of systems to improve information about border wait times and safe truck parking availability, which is such a priority for Secretary Chow, as well as improved electronic routing and permitting systems. Technology is certainly going to be part of the solution to making the movement of freight on our highways safer and more efficient. Which brings me to my final priority area, innovation. Research, development, and technology continues to be a strong focus at FHWA. We are in a unique leadership position to identify and address issues of national significance that require high-risk, long-term, distinctive areas of research to improve safety and efficiency and longevity of bridges and roads. We have the money. We should be doing the testing so that we can present solutions, successes and failures to all of you without you having to spend money on it. From connected and automated vehicles to improved construction materials, enhanced design methods, drones, 3D printing, new technologies in the transportation industry are advancing at a rapid pace and we are evaluating them all at FHWA and we are even supporting the research of other modal administrations within the US DOT. We had an event at the Department of Transportation last fall, our research showcase day, and all the modal administrators were there because we are doing research with all of them. There is widespread recognition now that automated vehicles are soon going to coexist and operate side by side with conventional vehicles on our highways. We cannot talk about R&D and innovation at FHWA without someone asking us about AV. So I've learned to just throw it in. I want to remind everyone, for every early adopter out there, for everyone who's excited about the promise of AV, and I know many of us are, there's also someone like my dad who named his cars and kept them forever. And so Federal Highways has to make sure going forward, the next 10 years, the next 15 years, that the roads are ready for both, for the most tech savvy and interested among us and people like my dad, whom we forced to give up the flip phone. I mean, he wore it on a holster for a really long time. <laughs> So we agree that AV technologies have a lot of potential, and the whole USDOT is exploring what it will take to convert that potential into something practical and safe. Just last month, Secretary Chow unveiled the department's new automated vehicle guidance, ensuring American leadership in automated vehicle technologies, Automated Vehicles 4.0, this guidance is also now posted at transportation.gov. It's going to ensure American leadership in AV technology deployment and integration by providing unified guidance for innovators and stakeholders. At FHWA, we are busy preparing the nation's roadway infrastructure for automated vehicles. Our multimodal research program known as the Cooperative Automation Research Mobility Application, no one calls it that, it's CARMA, 
is designed to accelerate cooperative driving automation. We want automated vehicles to work together with roadway infrastructure to navigate safely and more efficiently. Karma's goal is to accelerate understanding of the benefits of cooperative automation by testing shared maneuvers, uh, vehicle and truck platooning, speed harmonization, cooperative lane change and merge functions, coordination with signalized intersections. The research program also includes evaluating communication and coordination among automated vehicles, infrastructure, pedestrians, cyclists, we, we even purchased a few electric scooters to add into the mix for research. I can't, I can't get started on the scooters. I have such strong feelings about the scooters. But they're on the roads, and we should be testing. We should be acknowledging this is the reality, and how do we test around that? And I know I said I had three areas of focus, but there is one more, if I could just beg your indulgence, because this one is really important to me. Combating human trafficking is a critical issue for the Department of Transportation. And the entire US DOT is doing its part to help deter and disrupt human trafficking. We are all well aware of the multifaceted role transportation plays in human trafficking. Last month, the US DOT hosted an event to raise awareness among the transportation sector, to encourage stakeholders to sign a pledge, to join us in the fight against human trafficking. I would like to thank TxDOT for signing the pledge and for your leadership and your support on this issue. And dozens of Texas cities, airports, and transit agencies have also signed the pledge. If you are interested, we would certainly welcome your support, in the next 100 days, the department, all the modal leaders, are going to be speaking about this issue and asking more to join us in this fight against modern day slavery. So we welcome you if you are interested in taking the pledge. It's on our website. Email me. I'm Nicole.Nason at dot.gov. We would really like to have your support. In closing, I just want to reinforce that we believe at Federal Highways, I believe personally, having been at the Department of Transportation off and on since 2003, that transportation is a team sport. Collaboration was not the buzzword the first time I was at DOT. Everything was proprietary, everything was protected, nobody wanted to share information and data. From reducing the number of fatalities and serious injuries on our roadway to uh, facilitating the efficient movement of freight to advancing innovations such as automated vehicles, even to combating human trafficking. Teaming up to solve problems together, I believe, is the only way that we are going to achieve success. So on behalf of the FHWA, I thank you for the role that you have played and you will continue to play in building America's future, and I thank you very much for inviting me to be here this morning. It's a privilege to be here with all of you. Thank you. Well, Administrator Nason, um, thank you for, uh, for joining us uh, here in Texas again. We appreciate you uh, um, uh, being part of the Texas Transportation Forum and, and for your return visit to San Antonio here. You were down here with our Mobility Summit not too long ago. and. Uh, uh, we really do appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to come down and join us here in uh, San Antonio once again. So thank you. Well, I appreciate the chance to be back. Thank you for the invitation. I'm getting out this time. I'm well, not spending the whole day in the hotel. We're, we're, we're going to get you to the Alamo. That's, <laughs> thank you. That, that is vitally important. Uh, we have some time for uh, some audience questions, Great. and uh, we appreciate you uh, agreeing to uh, take the time to answer a few questions for those in the audience. If you have a question, uh, you can text it in and use the hashtag FHWA, and uh, that'll give us an opportunity to uh, uh, try and pose that question to the administrator. We um, have uh, one of our first questions concerns, uh, is, is kind of Texas specific. It concerns some of the Prop 1 and Prop 7 funding, which are ballot proposition fund uh, measures that have been passed in the state of Texas that have brought billions of dollars to uh, the state. and. Uh, 
What is the climate nationwide to have similar state investments to support infrastructure amongst some of our peer states? Well, I appreciate that, and I appreciate the chance to be up here with you again. It's always great to see you. And, um, you know, I don't say this just because I'm here. Texas is a real leader, and, and all of you make a huge difference, but so do the citizens of Texas, I think, who, who've demonstrated real commitment and interest and support. It depends on the state. It really does. I go from community to community, and in some places, there's great support and appreciation and understanding of how critical this issue is and how desperate the need is for funding and for the, for the ability to plan long term. And then I just, I did an interview not too long ago with a state in the South that shall remain nameless. And uh, the evening news reporter did the interview with me herself so she could really go after me. I mean, she just tore into me. And I said, well, this is good news. We're announcing a hundred in dollars for your new bridges. And, and she said, this is going to come with a toll, administrator, a toll. It's a five dollar toll. And I said, I know, I, you know, I know that upsets a lot of folks. I really do. I'm from New York. We pay five dollars just to get a quarter of the way across our bridges. You know, it's a good 20 bucks to get all the way over. It just depends on where you are in the country. And that helps explain the reaction you're going to have. So I do think that Texas is uh, a huge leader, and you are all to be commended. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Another audience question we have here is, uh, what are some of the challenges beyond funding that you've seen across states and local governments in, in meeting their transportation needs, be it, be it, be it safety no. or, or the infrastructure side? Well, again, I know you all think I'm butting you up, but events like this make a huge difference because one of the biggest challenges I have seen, one of the biggest challenges we hear about at Federal Highways is just poor communication. There are so many federal agencies that are involved sometimes with the project, whether you're talking about getting the Coast Guard involved or the Army Corps of Engineers, and there are so many state and local leaders that need to be supportive, and sometimes we find people bring situations to Federal Highways that it's really a local, Folks are not talking to the state folks, and, and it's almost like we're bringing people together to have conversations. And so having events like this, having great communication and leadership, like yourself here in Texas, resolves a lot of these problems. And so Federal Highways doesn't really need to be involved. I think communication is one of the biggest challenges that we see when it comes to starting and completing projects, because along the way, there's always confusion, things always get held up, and if everyone isn't talking to each other, it ends up coming all the way up to the federal government for us to come back down to try to resolve it. And so, again, you all are doing a terrific job and leading the country. Thank you. Thank you. With the great potential of connected and autonomous vehicle technology, so we're going to have a tech panel coming up later, and it's been a, certainly a topic of conversation as part of this, uh, this program. Is there a risk, though, that elected officials and policymakers will wait for the new technology itself to solve today's capacity issues and defer addressing the funding side of that to later on? I was in Stuttgart, Germany, in about 2006 or so, and I was in an autonomous vehicle, and we were going from the airport to the proving ground. And it was, it was such an experience that I thought, by the time I get back to the United States, we'll all be driving. The cars will all be driving themselves. I mean, I, I thought we were right there. We were on the cusp of mm -hmm. having technology turn over. And of course, fast forward, I don't know what the math is from 2006 to now, but it was not the next day. And so I don't actually think we can wait. There's a lot of promise in the technology, and there's certainly you know, incredibly high expectations, as those of you who have children know, from that next generation about what technology is going to do. My youngest is 11, and he firmly believes that he will never have to take a driver's test because by the time he's 16, cars will be driving themselves. Because 
if you're 11, 16 is 100 years in the future. And so, you know, all of you, you old people, you adults, you have time to get your acts together by then. But I, I do think that funding is still going to be a, a priority issue mm -hmm. in the coming years, even as we see advances in new tech. Well, in your comment on those advances in new tech, a lot of times it's, it's, it's surprising just to think back where we were four or five years ago and the types of features that we see and appreciate in our cars and that those weren't around a short time ago. One of the topics that has come up that I know that Secretary Chow has, uh, um, has, has raised uh, concerns and, and it's related to connected and autonomous vehicle technology and it involves protecting the 5.9 gigahertz safety spectrum. And I know USDOT has been active in implementing through research and development and other programs uh, a number of pilot studies that are making use of that spectrum. And, uh, but at the same time, we have FCC now out with, with rulemaking uh, that might take some of that safety spectrum and, and use it or direct it for other non-transportation safety uses. Any, any thoughts or comments on, on USDOT and FHWA's uh, uh, position on, on that issue? Well, the Secretary has really led the fight herself personally on protecting the safety ban. And so we all in the department appreciate her leadership on this issue and, and raising awareness to Congress as to why it should be a priority. And we've had great support from our committees. But of course, there are <clears throat> others who are out there working against us on this issue. So I, th I think the challenge has been, and the FCC's argument has been, well, you haven't done enough. Mm -hmm. In the time that you've had, you've had this incredibly expensive real estate, and you haven't built up enough with it. And so that is on us, and NHTSA and Federal Highways are working together, and I'm hoping that we have an announcement very, very soon, very soon, on what we intend to do in test cases with the safety ban to make clear that we're, we're doing full deployment nationwide. We're, we're out of the R&D portion, and mm -hmm. we're actually deploying, and that is something that's on us, and that is a challenge that the Secretary has given us, and we, I hope, will meet it very soon. Well, we'll look forward to that. Texas has got three pilots underway right now where we're making use of that, uh, that safety band and several more in the, uh, in the pipeline. So we certainly look forward to continuing to work with FHWA uh, in preserving and implementing and making use of that safety spectrum because it's making a difference. Another audience question that came in uh, from Twitter, what could federal policymakers do to address the solvency of the Highway Trust Fund? Is there political will to implement any of those strategies? I think we're going to have a lot of conversations about the trust fund this year. It, it doesn't really matter. Someone asked yesterday on the reporter call, President's proposal, 10 years, $810 billion, what is that going to take from the trust fund? And it, it doesn't really matter over a 10-year period whether it's $1 or $1 trillion. We, at Federal Highways, we watch the trust fund very, very carefully. And we know that we think we're good through 2021, which gives us time to talk to Congress. But we have to force those difficult conversations this year because FAST Act is going to expire. And this is not an issue that um, cuts easily across political spectrums. It's, it really depends on the state mm -hmm. that you're in and decisions that state leaders have made. And so it's going to be a really challenging year, but we're mm -hmm. going to push those conversations because we know we only have till September 30th. I want to thank uh, Nicole Nason, the administrator, for joining us here today. I um, want to remind uh, the audience that you can join the conversations online using the hashtag for the sessions. And I'd uh, like to just ask the audience uh, before we break uh, to uh, Join me in, in thanking uh, Administrator Nason for her time and uh, participation with the Transportation Forum today. Thank you. Thank you.